Hi there, my name is Ishira Premio. Welcome to the Business Lecturer in Wudin Show and welcome to my series on Business Finance and this is the fourth part or the fourth session on the topic uh, of Business Finance. So if you have not watched the first, second and third, make sure you watch those one on my Instagram page or on my Facebook page or you can head on to YouTube, get access to them and download them and you can watch them as well. And make sure you drop your questions because I'll be answering all your questions uh, as well in uh, another video or if it is possible I can put it in the comment box there I can just reply to it but if I have to cover it and then I can cover it in another video for you as well so in the previous video we ended on looking at the issue of our redeemable debt and we mentioned that with redeemable debt uh, the cost of debt is going to be the internal rate of return so we were on this question where we got to this point now, when you are doing a trial and error approach and you use, and as I said, the benchmark that I, did, I, I want my student to be using or that I prefer my student to use all the time is 10%. Now, if you use the rate and you get a negative NPV, what it means is that the cost or the discount rate you used was too high. So the discount rate was too high. Now, if the discount rate was too high, meaning we need to reduce the discount rate because it is because the discount rate that was high that was why we are getting a negative NPV so now to do the second because remember we have NPV A and NPV B in our IRR formula so we need to do two twice of these so if the first one you do you are getting negative meaning the 10% was too high so you reduce it but if it was positive meaning it was too low so you increase it I hope you are getting the treatment. This is a concept you don't want to miss. This is a concept you don't want to miss. So, having a negative, I need to reduce the discount rate. How do I reduce the discount rate? I can reduce the discount rate to anything, but let's say I'm reducing it to 2%. This is also discretional. You can decide what you want to do, but I am going to do 2%. So, if I have a discount factor at 2% here, this is going to still be 1.001. Present value will be here. I don't want to squeeze these things up here. Let me soup up this area. Let's create some space for me here. Good. So we multiply the discount factor by the same cash flow. It's going to be 107, still negative. Then we come. The discount rate is still, sorry, the interest rate is still 9. But now we are going to read 2% on what? The annuity table. So when I go to my annuity table here, 2% for the set period, it is 5.601. Then I go to the present value table and I read 2% set period. 2% set period, see what we've got there. 0.888, 0.888, good. So let's multiply up and let's see what we get there. So 9 times the second discount rate, 5.601. And that gives us 50.41. Then we have 100 times 0.888. That should be 88.8. Okay? So let's add it up and let's get the NPV there. So it will be neg 107 plus 50.41 plus 88.8. And what do we have? 32.21. And that is a positive. Okay? 32.21. And that is a positive. So that's going to be another NPV. Now, so this is the question that you have to understand. So which of these ones will be the NPVA and which one will be the NPVB? As always, you must understand that because it is B minus A here, meaning B has to be bigger than A. So the B is the discount rate, the highest discount rate, and the A is the lowest discount rate. What does that mean? It means the 10% becomes the NPVB, the 2% becomes the NPVA. I hope you are getting the idea. This is not magical, it's not mystical, it's just a concept you need to understand here. So in calculating the cost of debt 
for, ir for redeemable debt, we're going to use the IRR concept. In using the IRR concept, we would have to calculate two NPVs, taking into consideration the market value of the debt, the interest rate, which has to be read, this calculation has to be read on the annuity table, and then the redemption amount, which has to be read on the present value table. At the end of the day, we do these two shadows. So once we have our shadows down, we substitute that into our formula. So let's substitute that inside. Remember I said the, discount, the smaller discount rate is the NPV of A, and then the highest discount rate is the NPV B. So A here is the 2%, we bring it up, plus NPV A, that is 32.21 divided by 32.21. Now this is where you've got to be careful. The thing is minus, then the figure here is also minus. So it will be minus, minus 19.31. And so minus, minus become positive. You've got to be careful about that as well. Then we have the B, that is the rate, 10%, minus the A, which is the 2%. So we're going to punch all of these on the calculator and get our answer. So... Let me punch mine here, and let's get the answer. Right, so after punching, I got 7%. So that becomes the cost of debt for this question. So when it comes to calculating KD, now I don't want you to take this for granted. You will see it in the exam hall. Okay? Financial management, you're going to see it. Advanced financial management, it is going to be there. It's a topic you don't want to joke with. So when it comes to redeemable debt, the cost of debt KD is the internal rate of return. In doing the internal rate of return, you're going to apply this concept. And as a basis for understanding, it's a trial and error stuff that you're doing. So as you're doing the trial and error stuff, the first discount rate I want you to use is 10%. If you use the 10% and the NPV is positive, Meaning the 10% was too small, so you increase it. But if you use the 10% and it is negative, meaning it was too high, so we reduce it, as we saw in this case. So 10% NPV was negative 19.31, so we reduced it to 2% and it came to a positive of 32.21. Then we substituted that into our IRR formula, and so we get KD. So therefore, the KD of the debt is going to be 10%. So this is how we calculate the cost of debt for redeemable debt to use uh, uh, this IRR concept. For an irredeemable debt, you're going to be using the formula. But take into consideration, under each of the scenarios, if there is tax in the question, we always going to calculate KD after tax. Because this you see here, 7%, is actually KD after tax. Because we should have brought 12 here. But we took tax into consideration. That is why we brought 9 here. And this is what you have to understand about the calculation of cost of debt. So if there are any questions, drop them in the comment box and I'll be answering all your questions. But I'll see you in the next session as we continue with calculating the cost of equity or raising finance from equity shareholders and how we go about it as a company. So see you in the video in the next session and remember to share the video with other people as well. Thank you.